Today we read Spirit Photographer Saburo Kono, which is a one-shot by the creators of The Promised Neverland. And we were pretty excited when we saw this pop up on the Shonen Jump app, just because we really do love The Promised Neverland. It's pretty cool that they're they're putting out a one-shot right now. I don't think the, the Promised Neverland has ended yet, has it? No, it's over now. Yeah, so now they're free to make no manga. <laughs> Well, that's what I was thinking too, because one of the most exciting things about this one shot was simply just knowing that this writer-artist combo is going to keep on working together in the future, because I'm interested to see what else they can do, you know? Their styles definitely jive with the creepy kind of stories that the author can make. Mixed with the creepy and also cute character drawings the artist can do. Whenever I see his art, I am so amazed at his ability to construct landscapes and buildings and crumbling things and just fill the landscapes up with so much stuff. Which to an extent was not incredibly highlighted in this one shot, but I guess we can start talking about that. So the setup to this story is that we have a young boy who lives next to a haunted apartment room. One day a strange man moves in next door and the strange man kind of forces him back into the haunted apartment room and it turns out that the man is a spirit photographer, someone who takes pictures of ghosts. It's almost like a closed room murder mystery in a way where you hear about this lady, the previous owner, committing suicide and then the two of them are trying to find out what actually happened that night. One of the more surprising things about this story was how straightforward it was. You know, with The Promised Neverland, that was such an extended and almost elaborate setup. Because, like, even in the first chapter, it's the full arc of them realizing that they're in a farm. Mm -hmm. But then the story keeps on twisting and turning. <laughs> the turns are never over. <laughs> If you think about it, so much happens in that first chapter compared to this one, where this one really is just this man comes in, he says he photographs spirits, he's not obscuring who he is at all, that's what he does. And then from there, it's just this question of what's the secret behind the spirit of this apartment room and how is this boy involved? And this style of story is definitely up my alley. I love detective stories. I didn't love how creepy the spirit photographer was. <laughs> If this actually went to be serialized, I probably wouldn't like it that much because I don't appreciate the creepy spirit photographer. <laughs> he looks like Professor Gadget, kind of. Uh, oh, yeah, he does have the Professor Gadget mouth. I can see that. I like the design of the spirit photographer, but I have a tough time imagining him being a, a main character or a sub-main character to the long-running series. And that was probably one of the things this first chapter told such a conclusive story that it makes it kind of hard to imagine what the full series would look like. Would it be following around the spirit photographer? Not even saying that this has been greenlit for a full series, just wondering what the thought process was behind the setup. Yeah, I, I feel like it's strange the last story that they told was all about children. The main characters are all children. To have a child in this, I wouldn't even say they're the protagonist, they're all equal characters in this really small you know, one chapter story. But the character that you would follow onto another story is an old, creepy man. <laughs> <laughs> kind of weird. I feel like I would rather see a child photographer, you know? <laughs> yeah, because normally, like, shonen stories have the younger boy characters. So that if you're a Japanese schoolboy who exclusively reads shonen manga, <laughs> you can appropriately project yourself into that character. Which this one shot does have, but it's not clear at all whether he'll be a returning character or not. If anything, it feels like that boy's story is told. Let's talk about the big twist. Were you surprised by the outcome of this one shot? Did you like the mystery of it? I wouldn't say surprised. It was obvious that it wasn't going to be a bad spirit or anything. I think that would have surprised me if the spirit turned out to just want to kill the young boy because he caused her death. Oh, yeah. That would have been something. I was mentioning before how I thought that the plot setup was very straightforward, especially with the spirit photographer just literally introducing himself as a spirit photographer, that I had my, my reader senses kind of heightened expecting what's the other twist, what's the other shoe to drop. 
So when they were starting to introduce this, I already kind of had it figured out like, well, if they have the boy here, of course it has to do something involving the boy. And he says it's a suicide, it's probably not a suicide. So at that point, I already had kind of a framework in my head for what the solution probably was. And then when it's revealed, it's almost what you would expect given the plot setup, which in some sense made me like this a little bit less. Like it was touching when you realize that she's not an evil spirit, she wants him to continue to live his life and she doesn't, she has no gripe with him. Yeah, no ill will. And that, especially the illustration at the end, it was really cute to see the two of them together and then not together in the second photo. For a moment, I thought that he might have been a ghost child. See, now that would have been a twisty twist. This was just a, a one straight punch twist. It's like, oh, you know that setup? It was wrong. You're like, oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> and I guess my final thought on this is that I know that the artist can just go sicko mode and draw these amazing elaborate backgrounds and spaces. And I was a little bit sad that this one shot just took place in an, a square room with no furniture. <laughs> And you could see his art skill still shining through, like there are some really interesting angles and for the way that it was shown in the room, but it was just a room. The real standouts to me in the art was the cover illustration with the camera. I love the look of old timey cameras. Yes, so very cool. And then also they show the blood splatter of the lady that committed suicide a few times actually. And every time I loved it, it looked great. Just seeing that lady smashed on the ground, I thought it looked good. So that's it. The story was straightforward, but competent. Of course I like the art, but I kind of wish I could see the art in a more fantastical scenario. It's unfair to box artists in like that with something that they've done before. And you're like, yeah, that was great do it again, but kind of do it again. <laughs> it's like something, anything but just like an apartment room. For one one shot that they got published in Shonen Jump, awesome. But I wouldn't, I would hope that they go on to another idea for like a whole series. You're right. Like thinking of it as a one shot, I did really like it. It's just hard to think of it as a full series, which I imagine that's what the authors were going for. They're probably used to it. They've probably made a million one shots. Yeah, trying to get a new serial. Mm -hmm. On our little reviews, we always do out of five. What would you give this this one shot out of five? Um, maybe a three. I'm I'm pretty much always middle of the road. This one didn't surprise me in any way. It did not throw any twists. Middle of the road, Momo. Sorry. <laughs> Come on. What what did you give it? A four? Five? Oh no. Two out of five. Oh, a two. Can you tell that I didn't really like it? Yeah. Well, I just think that it was, like I said, it was competent, but there was no spark for me that really made me want to see more. I think it's because you have those expectations. For me, it was definitely just a, okay, look at this. It's a one shot. Yes, I, maybe I'd do a perfectly 2.5 out of five if I could. If you don't do decimals around these parts, you got to pick one. It's basically a flawless system. Let us know what you thought about spirit photographer Saburo Kono. Do you like The Promised Neverland? Are you excited for another manga by those creators? Those crazy cats. And stop. <laughs>